Hi, I'm John Twist. If you've already watched the Stromberg video, we're going to show you how to calibrate the automatic choke heat mass. Now I'm going to hang on to this with my pliers and I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. Andrew's going to come in close and you see that when it's warm, you can see how, the, how that bimetal strip turns clockwise, right? Well, the question is, how far does it turn clockwise? That's what we've got to do. We've got to calibrate it. But to do that, it's easier to take this guy apart. Now you can grab you can grab this and put a wrench on this. There's no way in the world you, you can get this bolt off because it's a steel bolt into an aluminum housing. So what we're going to do here is release it. This is a wonderful trick. This is how you this is how you get aluminum out of steel. This is how you get a, a, a nut off an oil cooler. Uh, this is how you get a, the bolts to go through an aluminum manifold into a steel manifold apart. You do it by quenching. Now to get steel and steel apart, you, you do it by heating. You heat up the two pieces and you unscrew them. But in aluminum and steel, you get them apart by quenching. You can't quench it until it's hot. So we're going to get this guy pretty hot here. I hope I showed you before that that, that uh, nut would not come out. But I'm getting this guy pretty hot here. You always keep your, your torch moving. I'm not using an oxyacetylene, just a propane torch here. Now I'm going to walk over here slowly while Andrew backs up. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't fall over anything in the shop here. I'm getting this guy hot. I'm trying to get him nice and nice and toasty. You can see the antifreeze starting to burn out of the out of the holes here. You never have to worry about melting the aluminum. I mean, I suppose if you heated this thing up for 20 minutes, maybe you, you could do some destruction, but that's hardly ever the case. And we're going to suddenly plunge this into my five-gallon pail of cold water. I'll tell you, this five-gallon pail is awfully handy for doing jobs like this and after you've burned yourself. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to quench it. All right, he's quenched, and with luck, when I put the wrench on here, you know what, here we go, the bolt comes right out. So this is how you separate steel from aluminum, by quenching. Now we're going to take our heat mass, and we're going to put it in, into this container and boil it, and see where the bimetal strip moves, and mark it there. So, in, in we go. We've already pre-boiled the water. Andrew's going to come down on here and he, he's going to look at this guy. You'll be able to see the bimetal strip maybe turning a little more clockwise th than he is as we bring this thing up to a rolling boil. Or a roiling boil, I guess, if you uh, want to be so, so excited about that, too. Gosh, we just had this boiling a moment ago. And I hate to have you guys have to wait and watch on YouTube because bo a boiling, a watched pot never boils. But this will boil. Here we go. We're getting close. We're getting close here. And we're getting real close. And we're going to take a look at our, at our bimetal strip here. Because this is pretty much a, a rolling boil now. And there are no marks. I see a mark, but we're well, we're well past it. So I've sort of got a view on where this is supposed to be. I'm now going to take this out of the way. I'm going to mark this with my hacksaw to where I think he should be. I'm going to put a slit in him. Just a just a, a, a bit of a slit here. That's where I think he's supposed to be. So now we're going to bring him back and put him in the pan boil the pan again and see if I'm correct because getting the choke lined up correctly is so very critical to having the choke work correctly. The, the two important things that I've, I've shown you in these two videos, if it is two videos, is to get the contact surface, the mating surface, uh, smooth. Oh, maybe I've marked this thing wrong. i got a rolling boil. I've marked this pretty far off. You can see the that this is a, not even close at all, so uh, I've got to re, remark it. That's why I didn't mark it very deeply the first time. So 
So here we are. I, I can see that my final mark is going to have to be just to the right of the, of the right mark. We're going to take our hot pan, and again, another use for our five-gallon pail here is uh, to get rid of all things hot. This is a little toasty. He was just in there, but uh, he's just aluminum, and he loses his heat pretty quickly. So. I was supposed to be about right here. So I'm going to make my mark here. And now we got a, a whole bunch of marks on here. So the question is, which mark is the correct mark? And that is why we have a paint pencil from the hardware store uh, to, to give us our, our, uh, our correct p position. But of course, this paint will wear off. In just a moment, we'll go ahead and fit it to the automatic choke. Now we're going to take our old O-ring that was fitted on the uh, automatic choke, the heat mass here, get rid of him. We're going to put our insulator into place, and this one is cracked, so we've got to be pretty careful of it. And then we're going to put on our, our heat mass, and we're going to line the finger up here. Absolutely, I, I hope you can see down inside there, but we're going to put the, uh, the notch in with the finger. There we go. And now we've got our plate and our screws. And of course, this has all been tapped out 832, and I've, I've used uh, new screws here. And now we're going to make sure that our yellowed, our yellow mark here is in line with the other two marks, and we can tighten down our choke. That is, unless the screws are too long. I hope they're not. Or I'll have to stop the uh, stop the filming and shorten the screws. And these screws are, man, these are about as close as you can be to being too long and not being too long. Then, once we've got this held in place, we can use a copious amount of grease. I often say a liberal amount of grease, which is, as you might imagine, one of the only times we use the word liberal here, at least in a good sense. So we're going to take our grease, grease up the, the choke, and grease up the bolt, put our O-ring on the choke, put the top on and now we can put it back on the carburetor and allow the the uh, water jacket to assume any position necessary so that's it that's how to rebuild the Stromberg automatic choke it's not difficult I can do it you can do it see you